Uh, okay, YouTube, uh, back on the Lotus project. I've moved it inside the carport since the Avora is still tucked away in a storage container. Um, the next task is to change the timing belt on the engine. To do that, I've purchased two of those scissor jacks, which are on the jack points back here. So what I'm gonna do here is jack up the car. Uh, the rear wheels first on both sides evenly. I'll be walking between this side and that side uh, and bring it up probably six inches to a foot at a time. And then I've got some concrete block that I'll put under the wheels uh, and I'll make sure they don't roll. Uh, this will be done safely. Um, but probably get the car at least uh, 16 inches off the ground, if not closer to two feet off the ground. So it's easier to work on doing the timing belt um, from the underside. Now the top side, I still have to take the, the rear hatch off. There's some gaskets from the interior. A quick peek at the interior and you can see it's, it's uh, coming apart and it's quite a mess, but um, surprisingly it wasn't as bad as I thought. Uh, some aspects of it, the carpet and things like that. It's all getting removed anyway. It's all going to get replaced, um, but I'll show you that in more detail. Work smarter, not harder. Whoa. Whole car just shifted. the opportunity to go as high as I wanted to. Damn it. Cars moving. Damn it. That's what happens when you live on a hill. It's just not worth it. I'm gonna think of something else here. You might have to pull the car. So I might have to pull the car out. It's supposed to rain today, so it won't be today. But pull the car out and uh, situate it on my driveway somewhere else where it's flatter uh, and do this portion of it. Um, I, I don't want to play with it further as far as jacking it up. The the whole car is sliding down the hill, and it's a, it's a it's a it's not a big incline here, but uh, obviously big enough for a. Uh, 2,500 pound car to uh, to want to creep downhill on me. So I'm gonna drop it back down and uh, rethink this. Okay, so holding the hatch on each side, I see three bolts, uh, all 10 millimeter. So I'll loosen those up, get them ready so that when I have more help, I can get this hatch Lift it off. It's pretty heavy, so no way I'm reaching over this thing and picking it up and off by myself. So hopefully the cavalry arrives soon and, and we're good to go. 
All right, YouTube, back on the Lotus. Recruited someone a little smaller than me to help take the dashboard apart. Say hi, Dill. Hello. <laughs> and with his help, we took the uh, rear hatch off. Um, so tomorrow, when the timing belt stuff comes, uh, in theory, I have access to it, at least from the top, although I know most of it has to be done from the bottom. Uh, but very happy right now. Coming apart well. Stay tuned. Okay, YouTube. It's a Tuesday night. Back home from work. And I dropped a lower tray. Uh, I posted on Lotus Talk about the, the nuts holding the lower tray and just spinning. Uh, so I ended up using a grinder to grind off um, the majority of them. And a sawzall as well. Uh, but this is the finished product. That's what the pan looks like. A bit chewed up there. That side's clean. The tray itself is, I mean, I can fix this with uh, some fiberglass work. It's in good shape, but it's been sitting for quite some time. I'm kind of afraid to stick my hand in here. Hold on. All right. Now I'll sift through the debris. Now, Tarantula jumped out at me. I might have to burn this thing. It's just a big mess. That's a cover to some kind of valve. Mud wasp nest. What? Sure. Anyway. For you existing Esprit owners, um, are these panels supposed to be cut out like this? Uh, those holes, those openings look too smooth for someone to have just taken a saw to them, so I'm assuming they're supposed to come out. Uh, is there any kind of insert that's supposed to go in there? Let me know. Other than that, the panel looks decent. Clean it up, maybe a little bit of fiberglass work, paint it black. We'll be good to go. All right, YouTube, I am under the Esprit. Directly in front of the camera is the pulley, or the uh, uh, crankshaft, which of course has a timing belt on it, which is what I want to remove. Uh, before I get to that, I need to find out what we're dealing with with the engine here. I need to, uh, uh, put a 19 millimeter socket on this uh, on the bottom crank and turn it clockwise. Let's see, turn it clockwise facing the engine. Yep. Uh, so that's the uh, the camshaft right there um, with the timing belt and the three other belts. Um, what I I've got the car in neutral right now. It's jacked up, but it's in neutral and the parking brake is on. Uh, so this is a so this is a key moment. I'm going to uh, put a 19 millimeter socket on that thing and turn it clockwise. And the hope is that it turns freely. Uh, so stay tuned. All right, guys, I'm under the Lotus. Uh, the belt, timing belt, is basically ready to come off with the exception of this bottom pulley. Um, what I've done is I, I've wrapped a ratchet strap around the, the V pulley itself, and I can't really get it to focus. I'm so damn close to it. Uh, and what I've done is I've secured that ratchet strap over to the, the uh, frame over here so that when I put the 19 millimeter bolt on that center pulley and I turn it 
uh, it might turn a little bit, but eventually it's going to stop. The ratchet strap should hold it in place. Uh, all my attempts thus far to break that bolt free have been in vain. Uh, and as you know, the car is up off the ground and I'm under it. So uh, I don't really want to play with it too much while it's in gear. All right. Here goes nothing. Wish me luck. Okay, ratchet pulley idea not working. It's so tight. Watch that strap actually flex the steel frame. So that's what I'm dealing with. I gotta get to the transmission, see if I can hold it from spinning there. Okay, it's Easter uh, afternoon. It's actually about 6 p.m. It's like 40 degrees here. Uh, pretty cold for Easter. That's the tool for the puller that I got from Amazon. Uh, ordered it yesterday. Came today on Easter, which was unusual. But I'm going to give it a shot. Uh, if this puller doesn't work, uh, I don't know what's next. Uh, I'll call uh, Lotus in New Jersey and ask them what they recommend. Wish me luck with this thing. All right, so the problem I'm having is, I think this tool could <clears throat> potentially work, uh, the pulley. It's just that you need two hands, uh, and though I have two hands, there's no way I can get both hands up there. It's just too tight of a space. If I were working on a lift, where I was fully extended, I might be able to, but right now I'm stuck just using one hand. And every time I try to center that bolt, the whole thing just slides left and right. So maybe what I'll do is get some zip ties, secure them around this the, the base of that thing so that the, the arms can't slide up and down. And that'll act, you know, that'll give me the best possible chance of centering that uh, screw on the uh, the, uh, the crankshaft bolt uh, that's rethreaded in there loosely. Let me try that. All right, progress. Using tie wraps. I was able to secure it at roughly the size that it should be, and I guess pretty good. Um, I was able to use one hand to now finger tight that, and it's actually applying a little bit of pressure, just finger pressure, uh, because somehow I have to figure out how to get my hand down there. You can't even see that way. Let's see. Let's do this. All right, I gotta figure out how to get my hand down. Let's see. Hello. Down there. Get a wrench on that. That's either 9 sixteenths or a half inch. Uh, in order to put a little more tension on it. Right now, that center bolt is just centered on the uh, flywheel uh, center bolt. Uh, so I don't have a lot of room for error. Uh, it could just pop off at any moment. So I'm going to turn it slowly, start applying pressure, and see what happens. Wish me luck. So <laughs> this little hole over here, I'm actually, I, I get under that, I look up so I can see what I'm doing. My hands are through here, all the way back there with a wrench, slowly turning that nut, uh, or the bolt, I'm sorry, on the end of that that pulley puller. Um, so it's, it's, it's really not a, a convenient space to work in. Uh, definitely something you'd rather do with lift or even better with the engine out. But uh, uh, yeah, making progress, very happy. Okay guys, uh, that crack right there is actually widening. I've been tightening the pulley and it got slack for a moment. And so I thought I had fallen off the center main bolt, uh, tightening it. 
but it's still on there uh, and I tighten it some more and the, the, the crack is definitely widening. So the, the pulley uh, with just a little bit of coercion uh, with some pressure uh, on, the, on the puller and then just tapping it gently with a, it's actually a small child's hammer actually. I bought it for my son, you know, 15 years ago. Uh, I'm using that and just by tapping it, it's, it's working its way off. So this is fantastic, that's great news. Uh, because if this didn't work, I didn't know what was next. Success, it worked. The pulley did. This should be... Oh, there we go. Off. With just the center bolt holding it in a thread or two. Uh, I've been reminded that there's a washer on the other side of this to keep note of how it comes off. I'm not seeing it, which means it's gotta be up there. Let's see. Oh, it's gotta be in there. <sighs> Using uh, that Amazon pulley um, with these tie wraps to set it roughly where it's supposed to fit, I was able to get this guy off finally. And this number and everything and honestly um a little advice is it didn't take much pressure at all uh i could see someone railing on this with a hammer and it not moving an ounce uh but the the minute you apply even pressure uh it came free with very little effort you know i started torquing that down and it jumped and then i was able to use the hammer to sort of tap it along the way um but Definitely get one of these twin pullers. Uh, if you've got a lift, this should be a, uh, a relatively straightforward job. Without a lift, you, you can only use one hand because you're so close to the car uh, that it becomes a, a bit of an effort as it was for me. Um, but I'm happy. Uh, there's nothing holding the timing belt on now. In theory, I could take it off. In theory, I could put the new one on. In theory, I could turn the engine over by the battery for the first time ever. I'll be very happy. So the engine's at top dead center. Uh, I just got the bottom crank pulley off. So that means there's nothing holding the belt on anymore. Uh, I've marked the belt as well as, as, well as the exhaust and the uh, intake uh, cams, uh, the sprockets. And then I've marked them against the body of the vehicle itself. There, and the light doesn't show it, but that one's marked too. Um, so I'll mark, I'll put marks on the new belt to match the old belt marks and that should make it easier as far as determining if I'm off a tooth anywhere. Let's take it off. Okay, this is what a good day of wrenching looks like. I use this tool from Amazon. Um, put tie wraps on it to roughly get these where I wanted them. This is the puller I use to get off the bottom pulley crank that's on the, uh, the, the crankshaft. This is the bolt it's there. Uh, to get this guy off, which then allowed me to pull down tension on the timing belt. Um, and I was able to loosen up the, uh, I was actually able to pull the timing belt enough and it got pinched so that it held the, uh, timing uh, belt tensioner and that I was able to slip the belt off the bottom pulley and then once I freed it, it, it released, I was able to get the belt off and then just a couple of, uh, it was just a bolt that was holding this guy on. This guy definitely needs to be replaced. It's a little rough, I could feel it. Uh, the belt itself, I marked it throughout so that I can transfer my marks to the new belt. Um, how does it look? Did it need to be changed? Probably, yes, those are probably some cuts that I put in it when I was uh, pulling it off. Um, but there, there are some wear marks here. Let's take a look. Some burrs that are, uh, there it is, popping off it. Um, so, I mean, it, it, it's probably due, even if I bought the car from the guy and it was running, um, my guess is it was uh, it was due for uh, a service anyway. Uh, now it's uh, now it's going to happen. So I've got the the new Gates belt, 
and Tensioner. Um, they came in from JE. Uh, and tomorrow, um, I will be working to start putting those back on. And I'm super excited about that part because that'll be the first time, once that belt is on and all the components are hooked up, that I will put the key in the ignition and turn it over for the first time to see what happens. Um, I turned it over by hand. It turned just fine. I'm very happy about that. Uh, but I want to see how the electrical system is, and I want to hear how it turns the engine over. And I want to do a compression check on the cylinders to see what we get. So I feel like it's a, a when you run a road race and you, you hit the halfway mark, uh, and you're kind of like, oh my god, I got another half to go. But at the same token, you're like, I got half of it done. And that's what I've done so far. I'm halfway there. Thanks, guys. Okay, guys, I just want to point out a few tools that were uh, super helpful. Uh, in a, I mean, you know, in addition to 10 millimeter sockets and everything else. Ooh, worm. Whoop the worm. Save the worm. There we go. Uh, so, in addition to all the other tools that I used, uh, this little hammer that I had given to my son when he was much younger was tremendously helpful in just gently tapping the uh, lower crank pulley to slowly work it off when this guy was applying pressure. Now, I had <clears throat> purchased a Harbor Freight puller. I had, uh, uh, I had other pullers, uh, three-prong pullers, two-prong pullers. I probably tried about eight different pullers on this vehicle, and this is the only one that got it done. That's the only one you could uh, work with one hand with uh, thread that bolt at the same time while holding with the zip ties, holding the, those two legs uh, onto the edge of the pulley itself. So that thing was, again, I've said this before, I, if that didn't work, I don't know what I was doing next. It was basically going to call Lotus of New Jersey and ask them, and they'd probably say, put it on a trailer and bring it to us. So I'm very happy that I got, I, I purchased that off the Amazon for all of $30 or whatever it was, and used that. Then for, there's a number of of, or at least one or two Allen heads it's under the car that you can probably get to with a wrench, but it's harder. I found it much easier to use this type of setup, which is a number eight Allen head uh, with uh, on a socket, on a, on a three eighths inch socket. So it was easy to stick it into the, uh, the, the Allen bolt itself and then just uh, attach the ratchet to it and one hand remove it. This came in really handy. And of course, um, just a simple white marker pen. This is tremendously helpful for writing on the plastic bags when you take parts off and you say, okay, this is where it came from. This is what I use to mark the old belt and this is what I'll use to mark the new belt. It's what I use to mark the, the exhaust and intake uh, cams and the, uh, the crank itself. So uh, indispensable. Don't use something that's gonna wipe off uh, if you don't get right back to the car anytime soon. Make sure it's semi-permanent and, and this is paint, so I believe it is. All right, there it is. Okay, let me tell you everything that I purchased thus far for the vehicle. Uh, first is the Gates timing belt, the AC pump, the vacuum pump, and the alternator belt, as well as a cam tensioner. Uh, and then these two little drain plugs that I was told I, I need to replace as well. Don't know where these go. I'm assuming it's the transmission and the engine, as well as the thermostat, a thermostat gasket, um, and then uh, the, the, the fuel injection rails, the little seals on the end of them. Uh, these little rubber stoppers that go in the engine compartment so the trunk lid doesn't come down on the on the bolts that are there. Uh, it was interesting that I was able to find these. Um, it's encouraging. Um, and then key blanks uh, for both the, the doors and the ignition system. Finally, a uh, fuel filter. And I had Alcantara sa uh, fabric samples uh, ordered and leather samples ordered. In addition, for the sunroof, I ordered a sample of polycarbonate and a sample of acrylic, uh, both of which I will use, uh, well, I'll determine which one. Likely, I'm leaning towards the acrylic simply because it uh, uh, it can be uh, tinted darker than polycarbonate can, and, and that's really my goal is to limit the amount of sun coming in. So likely, I'll go with the acrylic, but... Uh, I'll put a total cost for all these items uh, coming up next in the uh, the summary at the end of this video. Okay, YouTube, here are the, uh, the costs uh, thus far on this project. Uh, coming in, it was at $3,158.92. Um, I purchased the Harbor Freight Puller uh, for $16.95. The uh, two scissor jacks from Amazon for $53.16. 
uh, and the Amazon two-legged puller, which was a lifesaver for 3612. Uh, as far as interior work goes, uh, the Alcantara samples and the Napatec samples cost $53.73. Uh, as far as engine work goes, the, the parts order from uh, both uh, JE and RD Enterprises came to $436.20. And then finally for body work, I have the two uh, poly slash plexiglass samples, uh, which total $32.69, bringing the total project thus far to $37.87.77. Uh, thanks for watching. Talk to you next time.